Cisco Certified Network Associate Day 3 PM. Welcome back everybody. This is Imran Rafai, your trainer for this entire series. Today as you see on the screen, we would be dealing with subnetting. And uh, like I discussed in the last uh, video, subnetting is a very very easy concept. Once we master subnetting concepts, subnetting can for most part be done on your head and you don't really need a pen and paper and uh, I think once you watch this video well and if you try to learn everything that I'm going to put in here I'm sure all of you can do subnetting in your minds when I started preparing this presentation I realized subnetting is going to be a large topic which I cannot cover in one video so what I'm going to do is in day 3 p.m. I will cover subnetting for class C IP address for class A and class B IP address, I will have another video and uh, let's call it day 3 late night. So we'll call it day 3 LN. And uh, I will have class A, class B subnetting and I will have another concept called supernetting covered there. So let's not waste much time. We'll get straight into day 3 PM. We will deal with subnetting. What is subnetting? We discussed in our last video, subnetting is nothing but breaking down a large network. Now, if you consider the room that is shown on the screen, it's a large room. But just by putting this one wall in between, this large room is broken down into two separate rooms. That's exactly what subnetting is. Subnetting is using taking a large network, breaking it down, and treating them as separate networks. Now, to understand subnetting, we need to talk a little bit about IP addresses. There are two types of IP addresses. You have the private IP addresses and you have the public IP addresses. What is a private IP address? Private IP addresses are addresses in this range. So we have for class A, we have 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 to 10.255.255.255.255. That is nothing but 16,777,216 IP addresses. In class B, 172.16.0.0 to 172.31 to 255.255 255, and that is 1,048,576 IP addresses. In class C, we have 192.168.0.0 to 192.168.255.255 which is nothing but 65,536 IP addresses. Now what are public IP addresses and private IP addresses? Private IP addresses are IP addresses that cannot go on the internet. So if you if a internet web server gets an uh, gets a packet which says source IP address is 192.168.1.1 that packet will be immediately dropped because these IP addresses are the private IP addresses and they can only travel in your local network. So in today's situation internet assigns public IP addresses to your routers so you have routers which will have pipe uh, which is public facing or internet facing and they will get a public IP computers in your local LAN will all be assigned a pub private IP by your route by your router maybe you know router this device that is facing the network so that's how internet works in today's scenario but when IP version 4 was designed the designers hoped that IP version 4 would be used in such a way that all the computers on the internet would have a separate unique IP addresses unique IP version for IP addresses because when they designed that they thought there are 4.2 billion IP addresses in this 32-bit IP version 4 address and they thought that would be enough for the whole world forever <laughs> so maybe they did not anticipate internet to grow as it grew in the last couple of decades and uh, very soon they realized they would run out of IP version Four. and that is when IP version 6 was designed and uh, also concepts like NAT which we will learn later which is nothing but network address translation and private IP came about now what happened is when when uh, internet started growing so fast many devices you know 
every every human being today you you have a computer you, uh, you have an iPad you have an iPhone or any phone and all these phones and all these devices also try and connect to the internet now 4.2 billion is a very very small address space for an internet that is growing so fast so when NAT and public private IP came about it reduce the number of IP addresses that had to be assigned to each computers and each computers in today's scenario does not have an IP address that is internet facing so the whole design of the internet had to be changed when the internet uh, the IP version 4 addresses started running out so in in those days what happened is because of the class full IP addresses when any company let's say a company had two computers or ten computers when they went to the internet and you know the internet service provider and then told them that they wanted an IP address they wanted internet for their compu companies and uh, companies devices and they wanted IP addresses they would allocate let's say for instance 192, 168, 1.0 range now 1.0 range slash 24 according to how we discussed in the last video it has 254 IP addresses but the company had only maybe 10 computers so it literally wasted about 244 IP addresses now th that is what happened and internet IP addresses were running out very very fast and that is about the time when they realized that there was a need for subnetting where they could break down these large networks and treat them as separate networks so before we go into subnetting let's do a recap and let's see uh, how class C IP addresses work. So class C IP address 192.168.100.225 uh, subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 when we convert it into binary this is what we get and knowing what we know from our previous video we know that the separation of network and host happens here and this is nothing but slash 24 right because it's, there are 24 ones according to the formula 2 to the power host the number of host bit is 8 because we have 8 zeros minus 2 so this class C network has 254 valid hosts when you make all the host bits as 0 of your IP address that is the network ID of that network and IP addresses in that network can go from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, it goes on until all the bits of your host part becomes 1, which is nothing but a decimal equivalent of 255. So if you put that onto a pie chart, 0 is like the first IP address and 255 is the last IP address. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and all the IP addresses within this range, right? okay let's get into subnetting now is when we get into really interesting things let's take the same IP address 192.168.100.225 subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 that is your class C IP address first thing we need to know the minute you say subnetting we go into something called classless and when you see slash 24 whenever you say slash notation it is nothing but CIDR notation and CIDR stands for classless interdomain routing now once you start doing subnetting like I said you take the whole concept of class full addresses and you throw it out of the window so from now onwards we are going to deal with classless IP addresses so we would take 192.168.100.225 this is class C IP address so it's a slash 24 but we cannot say it is it has class C anymore because we are doing subnetting and we will be dealing with CIDR so let's say we want to break this network into two as you see here on the screen so it's like an apple if you take an apple give it one cut it breaks into two pieces right so to break a network into two we borrow one bit as shown here so initially this was the host part so these were all zeros according to class C but we want to do subnetting so what we do is from the host we borrow one bit so instead of the line being here the line now will be here right so this is the network part 
right now the minute you see subnetting we need to find out the network ID and the host ID for these two separate networks now these are two separate networks you have subnet 1 here and this is subnet 2 so we need to find the network ID of each of these subnets and the broadcast ID how do we do that we see the subnet mask and we see the last bit last bit is this this has got a place value if you remember this place value 128 64 32 16 8 4 2 1 this has got a place value of 128 that means each of these subnets have a block size of 128 including 0 so so when you say block size is 128 minus 2 is 126 which is nothing but the number of hosts it can have so 126 hosts plus you have one network ID and one broadcast ID which will be 128 so what do we do let's do this the network ID of the first one is always 192.168 and make this part 0 so that is the first network that's the first subnet and that's the network ID to get the second network ID all you do is add the place value so network ID of your second subnet is 192.168.100.128 how do we get the broadcast ID of these subnets you do is minus 1 from 128 so it is 127 that's the broadcast ID and of course you can't go beyond 255 so 255 is the broadcast ID of second subnet that's all there is to subnetting so subnetting is nothing but borrowing a bit from your host part and create a network so you're breaking this network into two so borrowing one bit so originally if you remember subnet mask was 255 255 255 .0. now the new subnet mask because we borrowed one bit this part so let's let me take another color this part is now the fourth octet is nothing but 128 because 1000 is nothing but 128 in decimal and as we know because we have now slash 25 because we have 25 bits in the network but this these addresses are going to be slash 25 addresses right now that is nothing but subnetting and it's very easy to understand this concept a little more we will get take another example now you get an IP address 192.168.100.225 subnet mask is 255.255.255.192 we'll convert the subnet mask into binary that will be this and if you see the original separation was here because of this new borrowals our separation is here now right what is the last bit the place value of the last bit is 64 so each of these subnets will have 64 as the block size another way of doing it is if you take this we know that the whole network is 256 divide by 4 it becomes 64 so if the block size is 64 each of these subnets can have 62 valid IP addresses and you can do you can find that obviously by using this formula number of zeros 2 to the power number of zeros minus 2 is 62 the network ID is 192.168.100.0 that's the first networks network ID by making the zero keep adding the place value of the last bit so 64 0 64 then add another 64 128 add another 64 it is 192 how do you get the broadcast ID of these networks 1 minus so 64 minus 1 is 63 128 minus 1 is 127 191 192 minus 1 is 191 this is the broadcast ID of each of these subnets and this as we know is slash 26 because 192 is nothing but borrowed two bits so it is slash 26 for class C borrowing table I made a small table to make things very easy when we borrow one bit the mask value becomes 128 if you see here so it is going to be 255 255 255 128 when you borrow one bit it creates two subnets how do you know two subnets it's very easy 2 to the power number of bits borrowed 2 to the power 1 is 2 the block size as we see here if one bit is borrowed block size is the place value so 128 is a place value number of fours is always 2 minus the block size CIDR is slash 25 because it was 24 class C you're adding one more slash 25 
when you borrow 2 bits the mask value becomes 192 that is 128 plus 64 so the mask value is 255 255 255 192 it creates 4 subnets if you borrow 2 bits 2 to the power 2 is 4 subnets place value is 64 so that's the block size number of force is always minus 2 it's 62 CIDR is slash 26 similarly for borrowed 3 borrowed bits mask value is 2 to 4 like as you can see on the on the bottom of your screens that is also got by adding wherever you have 1 so 1 2 3 128 64 32 is 2 to 4 4 subnets host is 32 minus 2 is 30 CIDR is slash 27 and the block size you see the last bits value is 32 is the block size so similarly 4 bits is this 5 bits if you borrow this 6 bit if you borrow this is the value um, I wouldn't want you to remember this entire table but I would want you to remember this value so whenever you see 1 bit borrowing you can know the subnet mask is 128 if it is 2 bits is 192 3 bits 2 to 4 4 bits 240 5 bits 248 6 bit is 252 so this is going to be a magic number so just remember this number I think that is going to be very 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 easy and uh, of course the block size can be derived by looking at this magic table and the CIDR obviously you can see how many bits you're borrowing you just add that to 24 you have so this is pertaining to class C we will be discussing about class B and class A in the next video alright let's get into some problems we will try to understand subnetting a little more we have a requirement it says create three subnetworks use a class C IP address of 192.168.1.0 and it says determine the network ID and broadcast ID of all the subnets first what do we do can we break a network into three no we can either break it into two or break it into four it's always multiples of two so to create three network we break it into four networks if you want to break it into four we know we have to borrow two bits and the last bits place value is 64 that then we know that each of these subnets have a block size of 64 that is 64 minus 2 is 62 valid host in each of these subnets how do we get the broadcast ID I mean how do we get the network ID of each of these subnets start with 192.168.1.0 add 64 add 64 add 64 0, .0 is here dot 64 is here dot 128 is here dot 192 is here these are all the network ID of each of these four subnets how do we get the broadcast ID 64 mi minus 1 is 63 so that is the broadcast ID of this network 128 minus 1 127 191 is the broadcast ID here and 255 is the broadcast ID here very simple and questions like this determining the network ID and broadcast ID is going to be part of your CCNA so start creating the solutions you know so start doing all these calculations in your mind it's going to be very very easy and in your exams you will not have much time it'll be very fast they'll ask you a question and if you spend more time on that one question you're gonna waste a lot of time later in your exam so immediately you see a question quickly get the network ID broadcast ID and answer it let's look another question so your question is going to be something like this you know you will have an IP address they'll give you a subnet mask and they'll tell you find the network ID and broadcast ID of this particular IP address quickly we say one slash 27 slash 27 we know is tw 24 is uh, class C 25 26 27 so that is 3 bits so as seen on your magic table 3 bits that means each of these table each of these subnets have 32 bit or each of these subnets have 32 as a block size that means it has 30 host each of these networks we start at 192.168.225.0 as your network ID of the first uh, subnet and keep adding 32 so 0 32 64 96 128 160 192 224 that's your network ID how do you get the broadcast ID 31 63 90, uh, 95 127 159 191 now where does this IP address come 192.168.225.2212 
the each of these number represent the last octet so 212 comes here that means the question our answer for this question to find the network ID and the broadcast ID is this 192.168.225.192 is our network ID and 192.168.225.223 is our broadcast ID so in our, in our exams you will just have a question like this and they'll give you four options and immediately if you do this you can know that this answer is the right answer so you don't need to waste much time quickly you can go to the next question alright next let's get into another concept called VLSM VLSM stands for variable length subnet mask in all our previous examples we broke down a network into equal parts now that is not feasible in many cases let's for instance take this question it says design a network with three networks marketing sales management marketing requires 60 computers sales requires 100 computers management requires 34 computers now like in our previous question three networks you cannot break a net network into three you break it into four but the problem is the minute you break it into four each of them will support only 62 hosts but we have a requirement for 100 computers in the sales department but in this because we need only three there is 62 host here that is wasted right so better way of breaking down the network is like this you know we break 126 as one part and then you break it into 62 and 62 for the other parts how do you do that first take the highest requirement so highest requirement is 100 computers take your magic table see how many bits you need to borrow for 100 tables so we borrow one bit can we borrow two bits so we go to the minute we go to two bits block size becomes 64 64 means you only have 62 valid uh, hosts but we need 100 hosts so we have to stay at one one uh, bit borrowing when you borrow one bit let's start with 192.168.1.0 1 so your network ID is 0 but with bor borrowing only one bit the block size is 128 so the next IP address that's going to start is 128 so the broadcast ID is one less it's 127 in between we have 126 valid hosts which is perfectly fine to accommodate our sales department now next highest is marketing department which requires 60 computers 60 computers can we go to 3 bits we can't because it is 32 we need to stay at 2 bits so when we borrow 2 bit our block size is 64 so we start with an IP address 192.168.1.128 because that's the next available uh, next available IP address and we add 64 so that is 192 is going to be here one less than that is 191 so 128 to 191 if you add both these numbers it is 64 uh, IP addresses so that's block 64 is a block size minus 2 you get 62 valid hosts which is perfect for our marketing department which requires only 60 computers so network ID is 192.168.1.128 and the broadcast ID is 192.168.1.191 but remember here it was slash 25 but in the marketing department it is going to be slash 26 next we go to the management department so the management requires th 34 computers we can't go to we can't borrow three bits because in three bits we get only 30 valid hosts if you see here 32 minus 2 we need 34 hosts so we leave it at two bits borrowing and we know the next IP address is 192.168.1.192 and since it is two bit borrowing it is you it's a block size of 64 so 192 and the broadcast ID is 255 the network ID is 192.168.1.192 slash 26 and the broadcast ID is 192.168.1.255 slash 26 it's very easy isn't it it is very easy and it is something I think uh, uh, I mean of course you require a lot of practice so, but if you if you practice it well it is going to be very very easy so what we'll do is we'll end this video here we will come back in our next video we will deal with class A and class B subnetting and of course we will also deal with another concept called supernetting 
and we will try and do a lot of CCNA exam type questions so that we get practicing and of course like I have told this before like I, I don't think so I can repeat it enough please watch this video as many times as you want so that you get thorough with the entire concept of subnetting and you should be able to do this in your mind you don't really need to take a pen or paper you don't need to take a calculator obviously you cannot get a calculator in exam so don't even think about your calculator but I would say try and get it in your mind so that it becomes second nature to do all your uh, binary you know multiplications and binary tables and all these things should be second nature so you can quickly find out the answers and your subnetings um, if you have any questions like I've always told you please feel free to write to me or you could also comment on the section below this video please uh, share this video please like it and please subscribe to our YouTube channel thank you so much for watching and uh, I am here to help you anytime anytime you want thank you so much bye bye